Today I am working with an Alice in Wonderland transfer from Dixie Belle. This transfer is really fun. It's got kind of that old vintage look um, to the decals. It's got many different pages. It's got <clears throat> the tea party. It's got little crowns and mushrooms and a little Alice. It has florals. It has the cat. It has the bunny. Um, it has the dodo bird. It's got all kinds of fun, cool things. I love the stopwatch. Um, I'm going to use that big Alice part right there for my piece. So now that I've got my transfer all picked out, I'm adding my Rust-Oleum glitter paint to the top. This took quite a few coats, so I just did this coat really quick to get a second coat in. Um, and then I let it dry while I was doing the base of my piece. So I am working on the front of this. I've got a clean, dry piece to um, work with. I believe I lightly sanded this piece down. Usually I do at least a light sand on um, the front surf, you know, on the surface if I don't use slick stick from Dixie Belle. So for my first color, going towards the outside, because I'm going to do kind of an ombre blend, I'm going to do um, uh, aubergine from Dixie Belle. This is kind of the darker of their purples. And I'm putting it on the drawer as you can see and then I'm going to focus more around the edges of the front. Um, the front I'm creating a scene with Alice and some trees and mushrooms so I'm going to <clears throat> kind of I want the outside to be kind of darker because I'm going to add my trees in there and I'm going to add the cat in there and um, it's really just going to kind of, you know, when she's walking around, she's in the forest a lot and it's kind of dark and overhead. So that's kind of what my goal is. Um, <clears throat> so now that I have a really good coat of aubergine, I'm going to go in with my amethyst color to the center of my drawers and kind of highlight that middle part because that's where the bulk of my scene is going to be. So I don't want it to be super dark and I'm going to have a lot of colors and contrasts in the transfer. So I want it to kind of bounce off of that. So as you can see, I'm really just working that middle um, with the amethyst. I'm stifling it, I'm blending it. I've always got a spray bottle next to me. Make sure your paint stays wet, especially when blending, because you don't want to pull your paints. Um, <clears throat> that's super, super, super important. You can get spray bottles off of Amazon in two packs, which I really like those ones. You can also get them from Dixie Belle. And if you do not want to pay for one, you can always use and recycle like a Mr. Clean bottle or anything like that. I like the Mr. Cleans because I really like the fine mist that comes out. It's not, it doesn't come out in like huge um, granules. It comes out as a really super fine mist, which is perfect for blending. So I really, really do like those. If I have any extras from cleaning products, I rinse them out really good and clean them. And then I keep them um, with all of my other stuff because they're really, really great for blending. Now that my amethyst is blended into my aubergine and I'm happy with the way it looks, I'm adding a little bit of Lucky Lavender to the center of these drawers just to highlight a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I'm really gonna blend it out. There's my Mr. Bottle coming back. I 
also dampen my brushes often to keep them damp. You don't want them to dry up on you because, um, you know, then the bristles stick together and the brush, you know, it leaves all kinds of strokes and stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you keep your brushes wet. But as you can see, I've got a really nice halo around um, the edge. I am going to buff it out a little bit here with my um, F40 brush from Klingon. I love the Klingon brushes. So once I kind of get it where I want it, I'm not going to play around with it too much more, but I do want to make sure that the blend is smooth because I am going to start getting ready to paint my scene. I'm going to come in with my um, heat gun, which I got from Harbor Freight for $15 two years ago. I absolutely love this thing. It's fantastic. I highly suggest investing in one if you paint or even do any sort of craft. When I do canvas art, I use it on that too, especially if I'm doing like a layered look. So it definitely was worth the investment for sure. I really wanted to darken the bottom of this, so I'm gonna take one of my Dixie Belle brushes, my oval brush, and I'm going to add Dixie Belle's Midnight Sky to the base of this. I am going to have hand-painted trees up along the edges of these drawers and these corners, and I want that darkness to kind of fade down into the feet um, so that, again, I kind of create that halo, that forest scene that's just kind of my base, my floor, my forest floor, I guess you could say, is what I'm trying to create here. So I'm gonna kind of blend that out, but I do want to leave um, kind of that, that darker bottom. So the midnight sky was perfect for that because these colors really just, um, they blend together perfectly. So I'm just blending that midnight sky in, and then I'm gonna add, um, like I said, some hand painted trees around those sides. And um, we'll see that in a second.
So here I'm adding a little bit more Lucky Lavender. Um, I'm trying again to create that scenery. So I want the sky part to be a little bit lighter than the floor. <clears throat> so I've added that Lucky Lavender and uh, blended it out, stippled it out with my brush. And then I'm gonna go in with um, like a mustard acrylic paint just to add a little bit of color towards those edges and um, in the upper corners. And then I kind of have a really good base to start my scenery.
So now that I've kind of figured out the direction that I want to go in, I'm going to pull that top drawer out <clears throat> and I'm going to tape it off with masking tape. Um, if you're going to do stripes, I really prefer either masking tape or frog tape. Make sure your paint is dry because you don't want your paint to pull, especially on a blended piece. It can be really difficult um, to kind of get that blend back if you have to fix it. So when I'm blending, I usually start around um, the keyhole that's obviously centered to the drawer, uh, not the keyhole, sorry, the knob hole. So that's centered to the drawer. Um, you can absolutely take a spare tape of masking tape and measure your um, stripe, your stripes out. I uh, personally don't do that. I usually eyeball it. <clears throat> um, if I was, I want this to be a little quirky and whimsical. So if it's not 100% perfect, then I'm not going to worry about it too much. If it's something that I really wanted to be neat and clean and just perfection, then I would measure them out. Um, but that just wasn't the case and I ended up spacing them out just fine. So I'm just adding those on and I am going to <clears throat> use Redesign with Prima's Heather Hills Wax on these. I love this wax. It's got a really pretty, it's like a light lavender purple color, which obviously goes with our um, theme here. So I used that on these stripes and I added a little bit of silver in afterwards, but um, that is not shown in this clip. So as you can see, I'm just using a little artist brush to fill these stripes in. I love artist brush. You can get, um, I mean, you can really get them anywhere. You can get them at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, places like that. You can also get big packages for like $10 on Amazon, which I really love. I am obsessed with our um, Finnabar 7P set from Prima. I absolutely love those. I love, love those. They clean up so easy. I always have a bunch of artist brushes around because I use them all the time. Um, and when it comes to the, the Prima waxes, they clean up very easily. Just use soap and water and you're good to go. I usually just take it and rub it in my palm with some soap on it and that usually cleans it out really good. So as you can see, I've got these really clean stripes. If there's any mess, just kind of wipe it away. And then if you need to go in later, the wax wipes away pretty good. You can always use a wipe to wax to wipe it away too, like a baby wipe. Um, you don't want anything that has like harsh chemicals on it because it might like stain your paint or something like that. So you want to be very careful of that.
So I'm now applying the chair and Alice transfer piece to the front of this. I'm gonna work around that. So that was kind of the most important thing to get on the front first. Um, <clears throat> I'm applying it with the stick that comes with all transfers from Dixieville, Prima, pretty much any company you use regardless. Every transfer comes with a stick, which is really, really nice. Um, I like to keep the sticks around because I use them for all kinds of things like mixing epoxy and all of that. So um, I like to lay, leave them laying around. So I cut the drawers with an X-Acto knife, a little blade. Um, I cut it straight through, no problems. And now I'm just kind of releasing the transfer from the film by rubbing, 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 rubbing. And you shouldn't really have to rub too hard with these. Sometimes you have, you know, some that won't stick or whatever, but you have to make sure that your paint is fully dry. Most important, because you'll ruin your transfer and you will ruin your piece. So now I'm going in with an artist brush again and Midnight Sky, and I'm working on drawing my tree. Uh, the tree itself, I'm kind of, as you can see, just, I don't want the branches going out too far, but I do want them coming in a little bit and kind of filling in that space in that corner. So I'm just gonna keep working with the Midnight Sky until I get the look that I want for this tree. So I did have a hard time deciding here what I was going to do next, what transfer I was gonna put on. I did have a really hard time um, deciding what to do next. I ended up painting the cat hand painted, which I can put a picture of at the end of this video. Um, but I did kind of go through a bunch of different options here that I just didn't totally love. Um, so I kind of just worked with my base, my painting first, and then I figured I would do the next step after that. 